Jonathan says, Samantha encourages men to invest in their home life, chores, parenting, and emotional couples life, romance, communication, making a deeper connection with their wives. How does this jive with Esther Perel's and the Manosphere's theory that intimacy and erotic energy are inversely correlated? Esther says the key to keeping the marriage sex life is more separation. Want to do it first? Interesting. Well, I mean, that's one way, I guess, of looking at it. This is there. There is this grand theme dichotomy. I don't know what the what the proper term is between the what I ter- use in my words, and I'm sure I didn't come up with this. Maybe I totally ripped this off from Esther. Whoever the domestic, the comfortable, the family, the all that stuff, and the erotic, the sexy, the fun. Yeah, the, I the, it, yeah. It's tough to put the two together and live in harmony with each other. And what Esther and the others have determined is, wow, it seems if you want to maintain, you can't enmesh the two, there has to be some little separation of the two to maintain both within a relationship. And I also say much the same thing. Much of my um, advice to men is predicated upon the fact that most of the men I talk to are very anxious in their attachment. There we go. And, And they're always chasing and pursuing and, and, and trying to go after a woman who has basically been like, can you just cool it already, dude? And so the prescription for those men is, back the fuck off, dude. You're just quit smothering and hanging all over your woman. Go do something. These men don't have much to do other than just with their wife and kids 24-7. So the prescription is, how about you become a more, quote, distant man? And that really triggers in these men, like, are you telling me to back away from the person I love more than anything and become a single man? No. It's called health, having healthy distance. So I can see where Esther comes up with much the same kind of uh, a prescription at a, at a grander scale is that um, I, I don't necessarily think she says intimacy and, and sexuality and romance can't cohabitate. I guess that begs the question well, of what's your I definition guess, of intimacy? Like- Here's the thing is like a lot of preoccupied attachment guys, such as the ones, you know, that follow relationship people on the Internet. uh, So therefore inhabit most of the comment sections of both of our uh, pages and whatever. They think that you are saying to act or I or anybody or Esther Perel is saying to act more like a jerk. But in reality, what we are advising is for them to act more like a securely attached person like somebody who literally just has their own life, like because they're a securely attached person and they don't invest 1000% of their being into the outcome of the intimate relationship. And so that's not telling them to act avoidant. Avoidant guys don't do well. Like avoidant guys are being dragged by their wives into couples counseling with me. And these women are begging the avoidant men to be more emotional and more expressive and to be around more and to be interested and engaged and involved. And they genuinely want it. And when those guys can learn to themselves then act more secure. So they have to come here and the preoccupied attachment people come here. The goal is for everybody to act more securely attached, which means that you have your own life, but you are a loving and intimate partner. That is also how you create a securely attached adult is by parenting a child in that way so that they're allowed to leave you and do their own thing, but then you are a secure base when they come back. And so that provides the template for later secure attachment in adult and about relationships. So nobody, Jonathan, or anybody else who's listening is saying to act like a jerk or to specifically uh, make up shit for you to go do that isn't real. It's saying like, don't you, can't you think of fulfilling things to do as an adult that don't involve following your wife around and asking if she's mad at you today? You know, and, and the answer should be yes. And if it's not, then therapy can help or coaching or whatever. But to an anxious person, Tiptoeing towards more secure behavior feels an awful lot like tiptoeing towards asshole behavior. And yes. so it, it takes a lot of convincing to them to say, it's okay to get out and do your own thing. It's okay to hang out with friends. It's okay to have a hobby or in manly terms, a mission outside of the home. These things make you a more complete, healthy, mentally healthy human being. And like, Ugh, but, but what if my partner thinks I'm cheating? That's a very, very common anxious man thing. I, I can't exercise. My, my partner will think I'm cheating. It's like, dude. Exercise. It's for your health. It's you, God forbid you look good in the process. Well, yeah, but you don't know my wife. She'll think I can't do that. I need to f- figure out other ways to build attraction other than getting away from her. Like, so yeah. to them, everything looks 
it looks toxic right. to and them. Right, in reality, right? those women are so relieved when the man leaves the house. <laughs> yes. You know, so they finally get the house to themselves without him following her around, asking what she's thinking and feeling, you know? And uh, it's, they think then that that's proof that women are attracted to these elusive avoidant types. In reality, they're attracted to just a confident, kind person that sometimes, yes, does their own thing, you know, because that's yeah. what people 